may not look familiar to a lot of you, but there's a reason for that. Given our previous experiences with other people who we have seen here within the Heaven's Ward storyline, they've gained new looks, new personalities, and in some cases, retained their old ones. This guy here is no different. He may be missing an eye, but he's no less the warrior he once was. And, now that we're reunited with him, it means that we have two members of the Signs of the Seventh Dawn back with us. So with that in mind, greetings people of the world, Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Ward. So last time we were able to be reunited with Thancred after we what came down here to the area near Loth Asnath, the home of Ravana. Ravana was defeated again, but it wasn't by us. It was by some brand new rivals. A quintet of people who dubbed themselves the Warriors of Darkness. And so now, we have new rivals to contend with. But we also know that we are still awaiting word from Lucia in regards to the dragons that she is communicating with over at Annex Trine. And we're also wondering how Kryle is going to continue to help us out as well. So there's a lot of things to be considered as we continue on here within Patch 3.1's main storyline. So, Alpha Note has the next main storyline quest for us, so let's take it. A challenge entitled, Dreams of the Lost. Alpha Note is lost in thought, doubtless ruminating on your implications of your encounter with the Warriors of Darkness. Blessed with the power of the Echo and driven to put down primals, despite his declaration that they walk a different path, I struggle to see how their goals conflict with ours. Nor is that the only oddity. I find it passing strange that such exceptional individuals should have wholly escaped our notice until now. Surely we would have heard rumors and attempted to recruit them to our calls? I recall no such adventurers, and I would not soon forget their like. Nor would any of us, I think. One of our primary duties was to scour the city-states for promising candidates, which is how Ida and Papalimo found Mathia. Ah, oh, the memories. It seems like only yesterday that you slew your first primal. Speaking of which, I had the distinct impression that it was not the first time that band of married men and women had killed a god. I labor to believe that a band of, pre of preternaturally... of preternaturally... I actually don't know how that's pronounced, I'm sorry. Preternaturally gifted adventurers has been traveling the land, slaying primals without our knowledge. It would imply gross negligence on our part. Speculation will avail us not. There is far too much we do not know. For the present, we must needs concentrate on what we do know. Namely, that Lord of Honor is no more. Vidofnir must be informed. The news may render her more receptive to Sir Amaric's invitation. Since you seem to have affairs here well in hand, I shall take my leave. Simply being in the vicinity of this colony has given me a stinking headache. If you have need of me, I shall be with Master Matoya. I will beg her assistance with the search for Minfilia. Wait, Minfilia is missing? I thought she escaped with Mathia. No, she sacrificed herself. I ex shall explain on the road. Much has happened in your absence. Too much, for in, th in that matter. And so, off the parts, Kryle. So we're done with her for 3.1, I guess. Alright. Oh, and we get a free pass right to Annex Shrine. Game, this is very convenient. Thank you. This is very convenient indeed. Whoever at Square Enix thought this was a good idea to just plunk me right here at Annex Shrine is a genius. Yes, yeah, sir or madam, whoever you are. To plunk me right in front of Annex Trine as anyone else, as well as anyone else who's playing Patch Point 3, 3.1 is a genius. Alright. Vidovnir, you've accumulated a greater crowd now. Yes, Ravana's beaten, but this time it wasn't by us. I had not thought to see thee again so soon, mortal. If thou seekest the knight, thou know that she hath long since departed for Ishgard. My thanks, Vidofnir, but it was not for her that we came. We bring good tidings for you and yours. 
Lord Ulvana, who had been summoned by the Nath, has been again laid low. Truly, once more you mortals have succeeded where my own kind did fail. You have all deepest thanks. Well, would that we could take credit. The god fell by another's hand. Another? Revelation upon revelation. Regardless, it is cause for a celebration. The Nath will have no choice but to withdraw. But to another matter, I have tidings for thee as well. Regarding the Ishgardian's invitation? Or maybe is it something else entirely? As promised, I have brought the matter to my sire. Hearken to his answer now. For a thousand years I have mourned my beloved, who gave her life to forge a peace that king betrayed. Such was my loss until a child of Ishgard came unto me. For want of warmth she wrapped herself in a dream, yet the world will remember her deeds. For truth she fought, for justice she sinned, for redemption she sacrificed and became his light. To follow one's heart, to have faith in one's convictions, be it for will or be it for woe, such is the folly and the glory of a man, and of dragon. He hath entrusted the choice to us, and we have made it. We will keep faith with you who walk in the light. Then you accept Sir Emmerich's invitation. Let it be known that I, Vidof Nier, shall journey onto Ishgard on behalf of my people. And possibly be slain? We are honored to receive your answer, and will convey your words to our allies without delay. Well, let's go do it then. But is this the last time we gaze upon Vidoff near alive? It is happening, Asael. With that, you are here to see it. Yeah. There's a catch. I can feel it. And why are we going to cutscene? Oh, because we're turning to Ishgard, where it's raining instead of snowing. Even as the Scion celebrated the return of a long-lost friend, honorable men plotted to deprive them of another. Uh-oh. Assassin's going after Ceramric. Accompanied by Count Edmont, no less. Yeah, this guy is about to cause a lot of pain and suffering. Honorable men, to whom Sir Emmerich was no hero, but a scheming patricide. Yep. Knife in the gut. Oh, boy. Yeah, let me just walk by and assassinate Sir Emmerich. Honorable men, who would fain wash the paving stones of foundation with the tyrant's blood. Honorable men, whose knife in the dark was the spark which set the city aflame, and who sang as it burned. So we just lost Sir Emmerich on a silent assassin. Wow. Well, we know what to expect when we arrive in Foundation. This will not end well. There will be blood. And to quote Nickelback, they are going to burn it to the ground tonight. Alpha Note is right next to the Aetherite, or rather close to it. But when we speak with him, oh boy, help us. Right, let us not keep Ceramic waiting. Oh, you'll be waiting for the entire time of your life. Are you quite well, Thancred? Yes, yes, quite well. Forgive me. You have given me a rather lot to digest. This whole affair with the Ishgardians of the Javanians and our friends nowhere to be found. To it seem there is no end to our troubles. We can but face them head on, one at a time. For now we must apply ourselves to our allotted tasks and leave the others to theirs. Remember, Thancred, we found you as they found me. In time we shall find Ida and Papa Limo and Ophelia as well. These troubles will soon be but a memory. 
one which we will look back on together. Pray do not misunderstand. I don't, did not mean to imply that it would be otherwise. I merely wish that I had rejoined our grand adventure at one of its more triumphal moments. Despite recent accomplishments, the mood here is less than celebratory. I wonder why. But I have no doubt that we will enjoy many more glorious victories soon enough, and you may be rest assured that I will play my part in them to the very hilt. I know you will. So then to the congregation. To receive the very bad news. I'm a dragoon, huh? If that's the case, why are you a Dark Knight? <laughs> yeah, I recognize that weapon, and it's not the same one I wield. I can assure you of that. And now for the biggest chaos and anarchy that you've seen in the game yet. Yeah, you thought being framed for the assassination of the Sultana was bad? Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Lucia, we're sorry for your loss. You have returned. In this, at least the fates are kind. Greetings, First Commander. It pleases me to inform you that Vidovnir has accepted Sir Amrik's invitation. Too bad we'll never see him again. She has? These are glad tidings indeed. Sadly. Would that the Lord Commander were here to hear them. Ah, is he otherwise engaged? No, he's dead. Aye, sleeping off the knife to the gut. What? What happened? Will he live? The chirurgeons tell me he will make a full recovery. Oh, good. But had Lord Edmond and Lord Arturiel not been on hand when the assassins struck, he would not have been so fortunate. For mercy, they subdued the fiend before he could land the telling blow. The attack was just the beginning, though. Not long after, buildings all around the city, including several of ours, burst into flame. Bastards caught us completely by surprise. We've been dozens of fires before everyone we put out. It seems like two more sought up. Casualties are mounting, especially in the broom. It is plain these fires were sought up by the assassins' conspirators. Until they have been rounded up, there will be no end to this. Will you help us find them? I guess so. We don't have a choice. Then let us be about it. Yeah, looks like it's time for us to finally, within patch 3.1, engage in combat. Let's speak with Lucia to take the level 60 challenge entitled Against the Dying of the Light. Lucia will begin the hunt for the arsonist without delay. The flames are spreading. We must needs begin our investigation immediately. Witnesses must be found. Suspects must be identified. Have you been able to determine the precise locations where the fires were set? Mayhap there is a pattern. If there is, we have yet to discern it. Fires have been reported throughout the city in both the pillars and foundation. Indeed, given the size of the area affected, I think it best to divide our forces. Master Offenode and Mistress Sistola, I would have you take charge of the investigation in Foundation. As you wish, mayhap the tower can be of assistance as well. Me and Mathiah and me get the pillars. Oh, they'll like me up there. Only question is, will the grizzled old rogues strike and oppose over there be joining us? <laughs> Thancred of the Signs of the Seventh Dawn, and may I say what a pleasure it is to meet you too, my lady. Oh, bet. The name's Hilda. A scion, eh? And, I was there, and there I was thinking I'd found a fellow ruffian amongst all these illustrious personages. <laughs> I will remain here to coordinate the fire-quenching effort. If you learn all to value, pray inform me immediately. That is all. Alright, time to go get stuff done. While we could begin by sifting through charred rubble and questioning random passers-by, in my experience every town has at least one individual who can be counted on to know things he or she should not. Well, what can we glean? Oh, aye. 
the infamous Lord of Manor Land of Fort Tom, lover of women and wine, though neither care for him that much. They say he could gossip for Ishkar. Just the sort of fellow I had in mind. Capital suggestion, Mathia. I wasn't even aware I made the suggestion. He'll be at the Quasir, most like, making an effort to be seen. So let's go and see him. Then away we shall go. Grizzled I won't accept, but old. <laughs> well, your hair is white. <laughs> yeah, your hair is white. It is a common sign of old age. But yet in this game, it's not uncommon for regular characters, regardless of age, to have white hair. Anyway. Let's make our way over to the Jeweled Quasir, which is in the Pillars part of Ishgard. Here we are. Let's make our way over there now and see if Lord Amanalan, the ladies' man that he is, has anything he can tell us. Because, yeah, when you when you come here under normal circumstances, Amanalan is here in the Jeweled Quasir, along with his um, servants, Onawa. Well, there, Amanalan, it's been a while. Well, well, if it isn't Mathia, dearest of all my friends, you're rather looking, you're looking rather glum. Something matter, old boy? Well, it has to do with the fires in your city. I'm shocked you're so casual about it. Ah, oh, yes, the Olsons. Dreadful business, that, and awfully curious, wouldn't you say? There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it at all. Naturally, we've doubled the guard outside the manor along with most of the other houses. Can't have the old pile going up in flames, after all. Oh, in case you're wondering why the Hoplon is awash with refugees, the lower levels of the vault have been opened to those unfortunate souls who have lost their homes. Sramax ordered from what I hear. Remarkable man. Not even a knife in the ribs can keep him from his duties. Actually, old boy, if you were thinking of questioning the refugees, I should be more than happy to accompany you to the Hoplon. While you conduct your inquiries, I could offer words of comfort to the distressed and despondent young maidens. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, Brock. Wait a moment, I know what that is. You'll give me one of your looks, aren't you? You do me an injustice, old boy. I'll have you know my heart yearns for what one rose, prickly though she may be. I see you remain unconvinced. Very well. If it will help prove the purity of my intentions, I shall gracefully rescind my offer. Now run along and catch those arsonists. That was not entirely what I'd hoped for. Whose idea was it to come here again? Never mind. For our next step, I suggest we divide our efforts. While you question the refugees in the Hoplon with fire, I shall investigate the locations where the fires were set. Would you be so good as to join me, Hilda? You know what? I reckon I would. Can't have you roaming about in an unfamiliar city while you're lonesome, can we? You'd only get robbed blind and left shivering in your small clothes. So that's how it's gonna be, huh? Question the Hush Guardians and the Hoplon three times over. So, yeah, we can go over to a place like that tribunal and expedite our journey. It will get us closer to the people we need to speak to. So, quick warp over here, and let's make our way over here. Alright, let's start speaking with people. Speak speaking with Miley. Or is it Mile? Because I know um I know that there's a famous Canadian athlete whose first name is Mile, but the I is not in her name. Hello there. There was a man with a satchel. I saw him leaning outside the window, and then there was smoke everywhere, and it was so hot and I couldn't breathe. I don't remember how I made it out. I suppose I must have climbed. Mayhap my mom is getting better after all. And what of you, Mr. Priest? Yeah, sorry about cutting off your brothers and all that. Yeah, that happened back in episode 49 in the Heaven's War 3.0 main story. Come, my brothers and sisters. There is food and shelter enough for all in the Basilica. And what if they say no? How long be blessings be upon you, Father? I confess we were not sure if we should come. There are so many unbelievable tales these days about the Archbishop and Sir Amaric and the Javanians. Trust in your heart, brother, and pay no heed to the lives of lesser men. They only seek to lead you astray. Do you require succor as well, sir? Um, I'm the warrior of light. I don't need no succor. In fact, I wish to speak with you, sir. 
So the Temple Knights have begun inv their investigation at last. Good, this madness has gone for far too long. Would that I could do something to aid you in your search, but I have a duty to these poor souls. Farewell, and may the Fury guide your steps. You still go on about that, huh? Even though Stomach is trying to encourage change? What if someone like you was responsible for it? I mean, who knows? We could... Those poor refugees could be getting themselves into something that they weren't expecting. Young lady? Ours oh, was one of the first homes to be cleaned, but I didn't see how the fire began. It was only when I heard our neighbors shouting that I looked outside and saw the flames. We barely escaped with the clothes on our backs. Were it not for the church's generosity, I don't know what we'd do. Hmm. Interesting. Well then, Thancred, I guess we must go to you now. And it looks like we're gonna do the full tour of the pillars. Um, okay, so are we going this way to find you? Yes, we can jump down here. <laughs> it is a bit of a fall, though. Thancred! Oh, there you are. Anything to share? Well, here's what we found out. Hmm. We will require more than the muddled testimony of a traumatized girl if we are to identify the culprits. While we were questioning the refugees, we inspected the scenes of civil scenes of the fires, including one near St. Remino's Cathedral and another near the Scholasticate. For mercy, neither structure suffered significant damage. Some set might say they were spared by the grace of the Fury, others might question on how such ruthlessly efficient arsonists contrived to fail so miserably on the two occasions when their target was a bastion of Vishgardian orthodoxy. So what does this lead you to believe? Nothing conclusive, of course, but it, will do but it does give us one cause to wonder. Alphanode will doubtless have an opinion. Yes, I believe we should run over with him. Oh, he wants to, us to go to the broom to meet with him, okay. Well, he was over there, so I guess it only makes sense. So we'll run over here to the Athenium Astrologicum and warp ourselves down to the broom. And see what Alpha Node and Stola came up with. But I get the feeling, because, yeah, we see the red circle. One cannot help but wonder that combat will be a requirement. Are they down here? Um, okay, now over here in this part. Okay, they're over here. We do not yet see the requirement for combat. But I can't help believe it's going to come. Silence will avail you not, sir. Hey guys, we're back. Ah, oh, Mathia, I was just about to summon you. As you can see, we have detained a suspect. But what if he's not actually a suspect? What if he's like a decoy? We found this man loitering near the remains of one of the stricken buildings. According to eyewitnesses, he was also present before the fires broke out. We wished to have words, he did not, so we insisted. Damn it! Let me go, damn it! You've got the wrong man! Actually, I believe you. <laughs> My, but you reek of oil, and all those burns on your hands? An occupational hazard, I suppose. But tell me, does Arson pay well? I'm a victim, you imbecile! So look at me! Aye, that you are, after a fashion. You should know that your pious patron has already spun us a delightful yarn about how his pet mongrel slipped the leash and set about burning half the city to the ground. Not very noble of him, I grant you, but then these highborn types rarely do show loyalty to their pets. In fact, he called you rabid and begged you to put us to put you down. Th that's bollocks! He's the one what told me to keep going! Ever, even a sinner such as me could find salvation in the Fury's work, he said. I left it behind, tried to with all my heart, send my prayers every day like a good man, but he came to me! He came to me! And there you have it, Hilda. Would you just be so kind as to escort our friend here to the congregation? 
Alright, so long as you don't mind if he's limping when he gets there. I really cannot help but feel there's a catch. That was incredible, Thancred! But how did you know he would confess? Well, I have seen his like before. A troubled soul, manipulated by men of power, and wielded as a weapon. I could not be certain, of course, but given the stakes, I thought it worth the risk. And if our captive had called your bluff? Must we entertain hypotheticals? The world as it is is vexing enough. Thank you, Thancred. Whether by luck or judgment, we have at last confirmed that these arsons were orchestrated by a person or persons of influence. I think it best that we now return to the congregation and discuss how best to proceed. Alright. We didn't need to draw a weapon. Will this actually be the first patch throughout the entire Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward storyline that never requires you to engage in combat? If that's indeed the case, I'm shocked. Because at some point you were always fighting a primal, or you were fighting traitors, or you were fighting something like an enemy that was um, brought about by the Dravanians and by Assail. There always had to be someone you were fighting, an Asian, like there was back in patch 2.4. Actually, no, it wasn't 2.4, it was 2.5. I mean, they pretty much required you to fight every time. And yet we're almost near the end of the patch's storyline, and we haven't had to fight yet. On behalf of the Holy See of Ishgard, I thank you all. The man you apprehended is being interrogated as we speak. Though he fell silent upon realizing that we had not turned his master, he will soon tell us what he knows, one way or another. Oh, yes, Lord Otoriel. Pardon the intrusion first, Commander. Ah, Lord Otoriel, are you come to see your father? He is attending Sir Amaric in his chambers at present. I am. He bid me bring this solve. Then do not let me detain you, and thank you for your kindness, my lord. In times of trouble, every man must do his part, with that I could do more. So that's all you have for us there, Hartoriel. My lord Hartoriel did not seem to be in the best of spirits. Well, would you if you knew that? <laughs> yeah, tis little wonder myself knowed. His father is widely slandered and his half-brother not yet called in the grave. And so, yeah, we're 30 minutes in. I can't help but think that this last quest will be... Okay, House Proton Kite Shield, and I'll wind up Lord Horshafon. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah, this could be a quick end to this patch. So, you know what? We might as well finish it. Let's take on the level 60 challenge entitled, As Goes Light, So Does Darkness. Lucia is not one to rest on her laurels.